You've probably heard in the media lately about the World Economic Forum, and they've told us that within less than eight years, you are going to own nothing and you're going to be happy. But they've also given us a hint of who the dangerous enemy is going to be at that time. We're going to look into that. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Now, obviously, living in a place like the United States of America, freedom, liberty, the ability to own property, and I don't mean just land, but just things, is a part of the foundation, the bedrock of places like the United States, and really much of the world for that matter. And to be told that people on planet Earth in just seven years are going to own absolutely nothing... I thought about this and I thought, that's a little extreme. I wonder what they mean. And so I wanted to look not what people said about this, but going to the actual sources of the World Economic Forum, I wanted to know what did they mean by this idea that you will own nothing and be happy. But before we go into that, who, who or what is the World Economic Forum? The World Economic Forum, according to their own website, is basically a consortium of multinational corporations leaguing together with leaders of countries, people within cabinets, within the presidencies or the prime ministers of various countries, along with potentially the Vatican, leaguing up together and trying to create a new world, a new order to the world. I want to talk about who the potential enemy of this is, or at least the people that they're planning. I'm not saying these people are the enemy. These people don't even necessarily know that they are going to be the enemy, but it, we're being told, it's hinted at within the actual documents of the World Economic Forum. Now let's go to an article in Forbes that were specifically told in the article, you can see it right there, that it was contributed by the World Economic Forum. And it says, welcome to 2030, I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. And it says, welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say our city? I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or even any clothes. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense. For us in this city, everything you considered a product has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food, and all the things that we need in our daily lives. One by one, all these things became free. So it ended up not making any sense for us to own much. And you can see how wonderful this sounds. This almost sounds like actually what the Bible talks about in Acts chapter 2. People own nothing and they had everything in common. They just shared everything together. But then it was by choice, not by force. And it might be by choice again, too, in the future. I don't know how exactly this will come about, but you can imagine if there was an economic catastrophe and people were struggling financially and maybe didn't have much food or, or they weren't able to pay their mortgage, something along these lines, someone comes in and says, we recognize that you can't pay your bills. You're in trouble. We can take care of you. You can still live in your home. You can still live in your flat. You can still live in your apartment. We will pay the bills you'll be taken care of. You just have to sign on the dotted line and you will own nothing. We, whoever the we is, it, I don't know if it's the World Economic Forum. I don't know if it's some multinational corporations. I'm not sure who ends up. Somebody ends up owning it, but you don't. And in this situation, if you maybe give it all over, they will take care of you. They will give you food. They will give you everything you need, clothing, appliances for your house. Some things we're told in the article will just arrive. So you need to, let's say, make some waffles or something like that. And a waffle maker, you, you let them know within minutes the waffle maker arrives. You make the waffles and then when you're done, you set it out, boom, it goes away. When you go to work, somebody will be in your living room. They'll be working there and you'll own nothing. And since you own nothing, it's okay. Other people can come in. This is what the article says, but then it gives us this strange thing. So they're, they're talking about how this is a wonderful thing that will be taking place where you basically have very little freedom. You have no privacy whatsoever, but then it tells us about the people they worry about. And I want you to notice who scares them. My biggest concern is all the people who do not live in our city, those we lost on the way. Those who decided that it became too much, all this technology. Those who felt obsolete and useless when robots and AI took over big parts of our jobs. Those who got upset with the political system and turned against it, they live different kind of lives outside the city. 
Some have formed little self-supplying communities. Others just stayed in the empty and abandoned houses in small 19th century villages. So notice who scares these people at that time when the world will be flocking to the cities because they'll be taken care of. They evidently will be the universal basic income, meaning you'll give enough, you'll be given enough money to survive, to make it. You'll have your toys and your entertainment. Uh, they won't be yours. When I say yours, they're not yours. You're just borrowing them. But you'll be entertained all you need to be to keep you pacified. And then what will scare these people, though, is there's people outside of the cities who don't want to go along with it. And these people are industrious. They'll, they're self-supporting. They take care of themselves. They don't want to be taken care of by the government. And this is a fearful thing, evidently, to those who are leaguing up with this system at the end of this period, this 2030 idea of what it's going to be like there. But that's not it. So you say, well, Chad, that was Forbes. Okay, it says it was contributed by the World Economic Forum, but how do we know what they really think about it? So the good news is they actually tell us on their official website, notice what it says. Eight predictions for the world in 2030. Number one is all products will have become services. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't have any appliances or any clothes, writes Danish MP Ida Aachen. Shopping is a distant memory in, in the city of 2030, whose inhabitants have cracked clean energy and borrow what they need on demand. It sounds utopian. Until she mentions that her every move is tracked and outside the city live swaths of discontents, the ultimate depiction of a society split in two. Now, once again, this is the World Economic Forum website, and the scary part, once again, is the people who live outside the city, they're called the discontents. They're not content to just go along with, with having the government take care of them. These are people who believe in liberty, believe in freedom, who want to maybe grow their own food and these kinds of things. These are the discontents. Now, I would actually argue, and if you've watched my channel in the past, I'm showing you the research on how people who live in the country are the happiest people in America. So far from being discontent, I think they're actually the most content people potentially in the world, those who live in contact with nature, that are living the way that they were designed to live. Now you say, Chad, they're not talking about somebody like you who owns, you know, uh, 20 acres or whatever. They're talking about the guys who own 2,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 acres. And, and okay, maybe, but they might say, well, why should someone be allowed to have 200,000 acres, which is crazy to me, I'll be honest with you. But then they could say, well, why would a farmer need 2,000? Or no human needs 20. No human needs an acre. Really, all a human needs is 200 square feet, you know, in a tiny little apartment in New York City. That's all a human really needs. And technically, that's probably true. But notice the idea of where this is going. It seems to be that these things are working together to talk about taking or removing freedoms so that we can give to all everything and they'll have it all free, but they'll own actually nothing. Now, once again, let's see how this organization, the World Economic Forum, is in connection with the papacy. On the World Economic Forum official website, it says, what is inclusive capitalism and why does it matter? Well, the question is, what is inclusive capitalism? It is this actual website. This website here tells you what inclusive capitalism is. This is inclusivecapitalism.com. It's called the Council for Inclusive Capitalism. Here you have the Pope standing right next to Lynn Forrester de Rothschild. And once again, here's this idea that now the papacy is leaguing up with the merchants of the earth. Now, the Rothschilds, by the way, if you don't know, are one of the richest families in the world. You always hear like Jeff Bezos or you hear uh, Elon Musk or these people, and they are very wealthy, but the Rothschilds, at least as a family, it is said that they own somewhere between 500 billion to a trillion dollars. I mean, so these people are unbelievably rich. And here you have her standing right next to the Pope himself. So uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, obviously, if you watch my channel, you know that I'm a Christian and the Bible actually prophesies about the leaguing together of this religious power with the merchants of the earth. And here we see this clearly, clearly playing out 
in these times right now. I find this to be absolutely fascinating. It, on their website, they tell us, we are mobilizing the private sector to create a more inclusive, sustainable, and trusted economic system. So here's the papacy and the merchants of the earth working together to make a, an economic system that sounds very nice, right? It's gonna be economical, it's going to be sustainable, this is going to be helpful, but if it goes along with the World Economic Forum's ideas, what it means is you'll own nothing. And so that's a strange idea. Now, I understand some people love the idea of the government owning everything because the idea is that government is a good thing always, which, don't get me wrong, I, I respect the government, I pay my taxes, I do these things, and I'm happy to live with a just government that allows people freedom. But when governments begin to take things away from people, they are no longer just at that time. And evidently, this is the outlook, the plan, or at least their prophecy. Meaning they are saying, now, they may be wrong, maybe it'll be a few years later. I hope they're wrong altogether, but evidently this is the outlook for 2030 to them anyway. The Pope himself wrote a letter to the one he calls Professor Klaus Schwab, executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, and he says, I am grateful for your invitation to participate in the World Economic Forum 2018 and for your desire to include the perspective of the Catholic Church and the Holy See at the meeting in Davos. I thank you also for your efforts to bring this perspective to the attention of those gathered for this annual forum, including the distinguished political and governmental authorities present and all those engaged in the fields of business, the economic, work, and culture as they discuss the challenges, concerns, hopes, and prospects of the world today. Again, I understand many people could look at these things and say, this is wonderful that all the largest corporations in the world, including the largest church in the world with the Pope himself, are leaguing together to bring about a better world. And that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Except when you realize that the goal of this is that you'll own nothing. And so you realize if you own nothing, that means your life is fully controlled by somebody else. You do what you are told. You want to have a good social credit score. And since every aspect of your life, there's no privacy. If you do anything or say anything or act in any way that is contrary to what is expected by this world organization that knows everything about you, you could see this could get very, very dangerous. Now, I don't say these things simply to scare people, but the point is they already believe that there's gonna be people living in the country who will not go along with this system. They evidently tell this in their own documents. And so I don't say this to simply scare people. I say this because number one, uh, maybe it's a good idea, the closer we get to these crazy times, to move to the country and to raise our own provisions. Because in the future, evidently, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one if you're not leagued up with the system. But by the way, one of the, one of the most fulfilling things you can possibly do is live in the country. As we say, research shows that people are the happiest out there. Growing your own food where it tastes way better than anything you can get in the grocery stores is just an incredible experience. But not only that, it's also a beautiful spiritual experience to be in nature and to see all the things around you that we've been given to us by our Creator. So. I'd like to just simply ask you, what do you think about the things that we've just talked about? Why do you think they think that the people who live in the country are the dangerous people, the ones that cause consternation or fear to them? I'd love to hear your comments. Put them in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. God bless and have a fantastic day.